What is going on my fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we are going to be learning how you can build this simple tic-tac-toe game using Vue.js. Now as you can see here we start off with simple tile, it says what player's turn it is and we can reset the board. You can also see this the board highlights as you hover over it which is nice to show that the user can click in it. So let's just start off as X is turn X. You always go for the middle first. I mean I don't actually always go for the middle first but it's a good tactic. Now O can go up here, X can go down here, O's going for the strike, X goes in and now X has won. Even if O stops me there, X can win up here, double win, there you go. So player X now wins, and there you go. That's how it works. I can also show you that O can win as well. Bam, so player O also wins, or circles, X and circles, uh, which, however you wanna call it. Um, and there you go. So that is how simple this game is. Uh, we're gonna be taking some logic from the React tutorial, just mainly to calculate the win. Um, it's super simple and really cool. And I haven't even explained what we're building this in. This is going to be built in Vue.js um, and Tailwind. So just to keep styling simple and we can reset the board again. So without further ado, let's get into the code. Okay, guys, so we're going to be using Feet to um, get started on this project. So uh, Feet is a super fast engine for Vue.js, React, all of those. Um, so we're going to be using it for Vue.js today to make it super quick. Um, and here we go, let's just type in here npm create and then we can say feet at latest um, and then hit enter and that's going to ask us a bunch of different questions. First question is what's the project name? Now this actually means the folder as well so I'm going to hit dot and that's going to create it in our current directory which is inside of a YT, YouTube uh, area. So let's hit enter and there you go. And then it's going to ask us for our package name. Now this is just going to be called Vue-Tic-Tac-Toe. Uh, we're then going to select Vue.js. We're going to select a variant, which is going to be, again, a few. And there you go. That's all it is. It's ready to go. And we can just run npm i to install the node modules package. And while that's doing that, we're going to come up here and we're going to go to tailwind dot doc forward slash tailwind css dot com forward slash docs forward slash guides forward slash vite. And here you go. So we're going to actually, we've already done this first bit. So we're going to copy this here because we're going to get tailwind installed. So now that's done, enter those two in our terminal. So you can see here it's going to say npm install hyphen d tailwind post css and auto prefixer. It's then going to say mpx tailwind css init hyphen p, uh, which will give us our tailwind config file here. Um, and we're going to need that open because inside of here, it's going to ask us to update the content for Vue.js. So let's just paste this new one in. And there you go. This is basically saying check any index.html file for CSS for the CSS classes and also our source folder for anything inside of there, which has the extension of few JS, TypeScript, JSX and TypeScript X. Um, and there you go. So that is all of those done. We then need to create a index.css class or you can call it whatever you want inside our source folder. So in here, I'm gonna call this uh, main.css. I just prefer calling things main. Um, and there you go. And then inside of our main.js, we can import that in. So we're gonna say import uh, main or yeah, dot slash main.css. Just like that, close that up. And there you go. So you can see here, we're just importing the Tailwind components, the Tailwind base uh, for the styling here. And then you can see we've already done that step and now it's ready to go and we can use the classes from Tailwind. So that's always good. Now there's one last thing I want to do and that's get in Google material font. So we're gonna go to fonts.google.com forward slash icons. I'm gonna select, select Git repository. Actually, I am, yes, I am gonna select Git repository. And I'm going to copy this here and then we're going to go back to our class and we're going to go into our index.html and underneath title we're going to paste this in. But we're going to say instead of material icons we're going to say plus outlined just like that because we want the outline styles. So if we go back to the fonts you can see there's different ones here. There's outlined, filled, rounded, sharp and two tone. We are going to be using the outlined ones today. So let's just close this, create a new tab and close this as well. 
So that is now done. We are ready to go and ready to start coding up our project. So let's close all of this. Let's go into our assets. Let's delete those. We do not need the assets. The components, we do not need the components. Let's just delete that. And then we have this app file here, app.view. We're gonna delete that and this inside of it. Hit tab and I'm just gonna, for now, do a H1 as always and just do hello world in it, just like that and remove the stylings because we do not need them uh well not right now we'll keep the style tags we are it we are going to use that in a second and there you go so that is that so let's run this so we're going to say npm run def and it's going to create our uh surfer you can see that was done in a second uh so let's just open this up inside of our our browser and there you can see hello world there let's make this zoomed in um 150 that'll do and let's just bring this right up to the side for now so it's over there let's take this and slam it this side and there you go let's just close this sidebar and this so the first thing we're going to do is inside our script setup so if you're not familiar with this syntax this is a part of feet or not just a part of feet but it's it's how do i pull it it's it's a it's an advancement it's a new thing in it's in sugar, it's syntax sugar. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. It basically makes it prettier. It's the same as running um, export default um, and then having your setup in here. Um, it's the same thing, but you just all do it in one area and you don't have to, you can import your things in here, such as import ref and compute it. So we're going to be using both of these things from Vue.js. We're then going to basically get a reference to our player. So this is going to tell us which player is currently uh, playing. So we're going to say ref. And we're just going to have a string which either says X or O. So that's our player. We're then going to get our board. Now our board is going to be where all our player or well, where our actual boards lives. And it's going to be an array of arrays just like this here. Um, although it looks a bit messy. One second, let's fix that. There you go. So this is our board. Um, we've got obviously a tic-tac-toe board has nine nine squares in it, nine grid elements, nine cells, and we have nine cells here. So that's going to be our grid. Each row start each array inside of this array is a row, and then any uh, item inside of those arrays are going to be our cells. Um, and we're going to, the reason we're setting it out like this is because we can use this to uh, calculate our winner. We can use it to uh, lay out our boards. It's a really nice way of laying this out. Um, it's basically just arrays and arrays. And then we can flatten it whenever we want to make it a lot more simple. So the first, next thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the winner. Um, and I'm just going to go to React's website for this. So we're just going to say react.js.org. Uh, forward slash tutorial tutorial.html and then we're going to go hashtag declaring a winner to get to this section and we're going to steal this function i'm going to i'm going to start i'm going to basically make it a bit better let's copy this um go back and paste this in because this is a great tic-tac-toe um example of how you can i'll, I'll explain it but we'll just, i'm just going to change this up quickly we'll set that equal to square it's going to be an arrow function and we're going to set this equal to const um, and as you can see here in this tutorial, let's, let's just, so we have a for loop for one and then a if statement there. Um, yeah, so let me explain what's going on here. So we have these lines and now these lines are actually how you win. So you can win if you have a line, a, a line of zero, one, and two, basically going across the top. So if you have X, 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 you win. If you have three, four, five, the second row, you win. The bottom row, you win, which is six, seven, eight. Then we get um, to zero, three, six, which is down the top row, zero, three, six. And then we get one, four, seven, which is the middle column. And then we get two, five, eight, which is this column. Finally, we get two last one, which is the diagonals. We get zero, four, and eight. And then we get two, four, and six. So this is two, four and six and basically we're then going to loop through our lines so we're going to go i and then we'll loop for every single line we're going to get a const a b and c um which is just basically our dummy um we're basically pulling out the 
from our lines to numbers. So that'll be uh, 0, 1, and 2, for example, 3, 4, and 5. Basically, we're just pulling out these numbers and putting them into an ABC. We're well, going say if squares A, so the first one, and squares B is equal to squares B and squares A is equal to square C. So if they all match, we're then going to say return squares what A back out of here, and then we're going to return null. Um, so basically, this is going to say if, sorry, if we win, then the winner is whoever obviously is in the, the squares. So we're going to return that as our winner, else we're just going to return null there. It's pretty simple, although it looks really complex. Um, it's just easier to copy this out of the React tutorial because it's, a, it's I mean, you're pretty much going to use the same method, but if you want to write it out yourself, you can. Um, and there you go. So let's do that there. And also, all this code is going to be on GitHub. So if you do want it, you can uh, go and get it from my GitHub. Link will be in the description. So underneath calculate winner, we're just going to say const winner, which is basically going to tell us if there is a winner. Um, and we'll basically go use computed, an arrow function, and then we're just going to say calculate winner. And we're going to pass in the board.value as our squares. So this will be the boards here. And obviously, because we're using a reference, we need to make sure we call .value on our board. Um, oh, and we also want to say dot flat because we want to flatten our uh, our board into literally a singular array. So this will be 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, just like it is here because obviously these numbers go from 0 to 8 and not 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, um, because that's how they're currently laid out inside of the board. So we flatten it to bring Basically, flat will turn this or this array into a just one array, the main array with a bunch of strings in it, like that. Um, so there you go. So now we have our winner. We can then go to const uh, make move, which is going to be how we select our move, and we're going to pass the x and y position of where we click. So when we click on our board, we're going to basically say this is position. This is uh, y. So what is it? This is Y1. And if we clicked here, that's also one. So that would be um, Y1, X1. And this would be Y1, X0 and so on. So we're going to pass the X and Y values through our make move, which we're then going to say if winner.value. So if we have a winner, we're going to return. That means the game's over. We're then going to say if our board.value our board.value and y is not equal to a empty box, then we're going to return. Because that means someone's already placed a marker in there and you cannot make your move in there. So we're just going to return. Finally, we're just going to say boards.value x and y is equal to the player value. Because that means our player or our board, that means we're going to set our board equal to whoever just made their move. We're then going to change the player. So we're going to say player dot value is equal to uh, player dot value is equal to x so if the player is currently x we're going to say nope it's now zero else it's going to be x because that means it's o so the x and o method here it basically just it's just a ternary operator that says if this is true so if it's equal to x then we're going to swap it to o else it means it's already o so we're going to swap it to x i hope that makes sense um, so now if we carry on, we can now do our last method before we write up our markup and that's going to be reset game. Um, and that's just going to be an arrow function that basically resets the board. So we're just going to say boards.value is equal to the, the same board value we have up here and our player x value or our player value is going to be back to X. You can randomize this, so a random player is picked every time, or you could leave it to whoever made the last move, so you could just not change it here. Oh no, sorry, not change it here, and it will use whoever you had last. But for now, let's just set it back to X so it's all reset. So let's just close that, and let's get on with our markup. So we, we've, we've been doing all the logic for our game, it's time for the markup. So we're gonna have a main with the class of PT8, 
and also we may want to we may want to have well we're going to have a text center as well to center our elements and inside of our main tag we are going to have a h1 which says tick tack toe inside of it and we're going to have the class we're going to have a few classes in here the first one being mb8 to push anything down so we want to make sure there's space below our title we're then going to have a text free excel to make it a lot larger we're then going to have a font of bold and also uppercase for our um title here and then we're going to have a h3 and this is going to be our player which player is currently playing so we're just going to have a text excel in here and an mb4 now inside here we're going to say uh, player and we're going to say player then we're just going to do a little s here and we're going to say turn that means it's player and if it's x is turn player x is turn and as you can see that's what it shows on the right side here now i do not like this light mode um but if you do like it then obviously you can use it but in tailwinds you could do something called dark and i'm gonna say if we're in a dark mode um well if it, if your if your system is in dark mode then i'm just gonna say dark and then we can pass through the dark value so i'm gonna say dark background gray 800 and there you go i'm also going to add a min height of screen which is basically going to make this the full screen and we're also then going to say dark text it's going to be white by default if you're in dark mode and there you go that's because my system is set to dark mode so it's gone dark but if your system set to light mode then you'll still see the light mode version you can ignore this if you want to do light mode i'm doing dark mode so here we go so let's now go under here and we're going to get our board set so we're going to have a flex flex coal and items center with a mb of eight to push anything down below and that's going to be our initial outer grid we're then going to have a board in here so we're going to say just a diff and i'm going to break this down just to make it neater and we're going to use v form we're going to say we're going to have our row and the uh, x value for our row so for each row inside of our in our board we're then going to set the key to be equal to x and then we'll give it a class of flex now inside of here we're going to do the same thing but we're going to for loop for our y so we're going to say fee for um our cell in y oh i forgot the the quotes we're going to set that equal to, or we're going to say in our row so for the cell in our row we're going to loop for that then going to get the key which is going to be our y and let's just break this down again break that down again again just break this all down so it looks a bit neater we're then going to have an at clicked method here or at click sorry and not all capitals and this is going to be our make move where we're going to pass through our x and our y value um so we can just do that there cool. And then under here we can have a class we're actually going to bind this class and i'm going to pass uh some uh, back ticks in here so we can use some template literal sorry let me scroll down a little i just noticed how high down we were um and then inside of our class we just want we're going to want a border for each cell so we're going to say border border white we're then going to want the width to be about 20 uh yeah we'll say 20 height 20 um and then we're gonna want the huffer to be background gray 700 to make it slightly lighter than the current background we're then gonna want to flex the items center justify center and then we're gonna set the materials material icons hyphen outlined and that's going to allow us to use the material icon inside of here and then we can say text for excel and then cursor pointer for this as well if we hit save you can see we now have our grid which we can highlight we you can see i'm making turns here 
and nobody is one because basically I filled up the grid, but you can't see that the grid is currently full because we're not showing anything. So let's actually show something now. So in here, we're just gonna say cell is equal to X. So if cell is equal to X, we're gonna pass through close. Else if cell is equal to O, we're gonna pass through, uh, not check, we're gonna pass through circle and say, Otherwise, if neither of these, if it's not equal to X and it's not equal to O, it's going to be an empty string. And there you go. You can see the grid is set there. It's O's term, but I've kind of broken it. So let's refresh. And there you go. Let's have a look. Oh, and X is the winner, but we can't actually see that anyone has won. So to make sure people know you have won, underneath our grid here, we're just going to say another diff. Let's scroll down here. And... We're going to give this the class. Uh, we actually do not need this. We could just have the diff there just to pull it all in one. Or we don't even have the diff. We don't need a diff. Let's remove the diff. I think the diff's um, overkill. Well, I, did, I had loads of diffs just to put things, just to wrap things. And you don't always need it. So let's just say H2. And I'm going to say class is going to be equal to text 6XL. Because we want this to be large. It's going to be the winning text. Um, we're going to say font bold and also mb8 to push down our reset button once we make it and then we're going to say player and then we're going to say pass through winner wins and there you go see player x wins so if we reset you could just say it says player nobody wins and we don't want to see this if we're not actually set i've also noticed i spelled font bold wrong there we go so let's now just say in here, we're just gonna say fee if, so we're just gonna do an if statement and we're gonna say if there is a winner. So if there isn't one, we're not gonna see that, which means we don't actually have to view it. I'm then gonna create a button with an at click event, which just says reset game, which we can do at any point during the game um, in case you know we win or we draw. Um, and then we can say class is equal to px4, py2 not not minus y2 py2 we're going to give it a background pink of 500 a rounded class uppercase font bold and then we're going to give it a huffer state of background pink uh 600 and i'm just going to say duration of 300 which is going to give it an effect and i'm just going to say reset game here now, if we hover over it, you can see that says reset game. So if we make a couple of turns, we can reset the game now. Cool. Now, there's one last thing I want to do. I've just realized I've missed it out. And that is the reason we made this a um, the ability to do a template literal is so we can actually say if cell is equal to, and then we, or yeah, if cell is equal to X, then we want to say text, pink 500 else we want to say text blue 500 hit save and there you go you can see now the o's are blue you know i'm gonna make that 400 to make it a bit brighter there we go we've got x's and o's in the pink and blue color there so let's bring this up and there you go you can see this is our game we can day XO, XO, X, and player X wins. And that is the game we have built today. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do not forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or anything like that. So in the next video, we could potentially add an AI to this. So we play against an AI enemy. Um, so let me know what you let me know what you want to see, and if you want to see us add in an enemy who either randomly places or an AI enemy which will try and pick a path to do uh, X or O's, um, then we can try and add that in. I think that'd be a really cool concept. So, guys, without further ado, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.